Hello everyone, another classic movie coming to you, and today I wanted to talk about The Great Escape. Yes, I just got done watching it, and, um, a very good film and a reason, and I think there is a reason why I would probably label this as a, as a classic, because so many other movies have sort of paid homage to this film. Um, or have referenced it, or have maybe used it in some way, shape, or form uh, when it comes to these kinds of like escape type movies, um, particularly prison type movies. I, I think a lot of people really draw in from this film. Uh, and this film is actually based upon an actual event that actually took place and on an actual nonfiction novel written by Paul. I want to make sure I get his name right. Brick Hill. And basically, uh, it is an actual account, and these characters are somewhat composites of real men. So basically, what you're going to see is a relatively realistic account as to what happened in this great escape. Now, basically, the great escape takes place during World War II, where these um, Allied forces are being held by the Germans um, as prisoners of war, and the the interesting thing is is that the conditions, as the way the movie shows it, aren't necessarily so bad. Um, you know, they're given food, they're given water, um, they they're given things to do. Like they can. Um, I'll make a garden at one point, uh, <laughs> and uh, they can. They still are capable of doing lots of things. It's just they they just have to be in these these confines, and obviously that's that's probably not what they what or where they would like to be, um, and so they decide that it is best if they s initiate an escape, and basically the person who sort of uh, starts this kind of initiation is um, squadron leader Roger Bartlett uh, and he's played by Richard Attenborough which we saw just a few days ago when I was talking about Elizabeth um, and basically he's the one who kind of starts this escape off and you also have other uh, important characters like Flight Lieutenant Bob Henley, played by James Gardner, and Captain Virgil Hiltz, played by Stephen McQueen. Now, what you have to kind of understand about this movie is that this movie is trying to sort of set up the escape, uh, as far as plot-wise is concerned. It tries to set up this escape, and, um, and in doing so, as it's setting up this escape, it tries to present the audience with the um, with how they go about this, and not only how they sort of initiate the escape, but also how they try to make sure that it's not discovered by, um, the Germans that are watching them within the camp. So you, you kind of see, like, the various strategies that they use, and I think that's why a lot of people can take a lot from this film, because they can look at these strategies and try to maybe figure out their own strategy but at the same time maybe using elements of this movie. I think this movie really helped launch kind of like uh, this sort of trend with movies and making these kinds of escape strategies and implementing them. Uh, especially when you have a non-fictional account, which this is, which is actually really good because if you have a non-fictional account then you can really have a realistic kind of portrayal and then you don't really get these like um, uh, these these things that could probably hinder problems or maybe result in maybe some form of a plot hole um, because you have something that actually happened and that actually uh, was initiated so again it's not like you have to con construct things from scratch and I think that this movie really allowed for movie makers to do that. And you'll you'll see this in, in movies like Trick and Run. I, I'm sure with Toy Story 3, they said that they did watch all of these, like, escape-type-esque movies. And I'm sure The Great Escape was one of them. 
and they, and I think there have been other movies as well that have tried to pay sort of a homage to this film because of how it portrays this kind of big escape. But basically the plot just kind of starts off with them all being in the camp and then them initiating the escape and then the, the escape um, being undertaken and then and then finally the escape being um, initiated and set for a go. And you'll see how basically what they do is they, they make tunnels um, so that they can get across from the other side of where they're being held up at the camp. And their plan is to basically forge like fake IDs once they get out and to just go into these different directions so that they can go back to allied areas or uh, back to areas where there is no war. Like, um, like two of the guys that kind of go together, uh, they wanted to end up going to Switzerland. I think that was probably, I think another guy wanted to go to Switzerland as well. Um, but you'll see how each one sort of takes like a path. Another one wants to go to Spain. Um, so really that's how this whole escape thing works. It's, it's like you all escape and then you all branch out. And their initial goal was to, I believe, uh, take 250 of the prisoners that were held and to have them be able to escape. Um, and I think the reason why they wanted to uh, escape is because, I mean, I don't think um, uh, these, these, these people these that are on the Allied side would want to sit on the sidelines um, uh, while there's while there's other people out there uh, who are who are free and I and I think that that's really was their kind of a mindset that this was just a form of suppression even though it was a it wasn't so gruesome or or, or bad um, because as the film makes it really out to be because they are given access to food water and they can even garden at one point if they want to um, they can socialize with each other they can talk it's it's fairly free and open but in just this kind of secluded area but I think it's 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 somewhat understandable their mindsets as to why they would say you know what this isn't this isn't really a, a life um so I, I mean I think uh, initiating an escape is is fairly understandable and um, you'll even see towards the end of the film if they'll they'll kind of question was this plan worth it um, and I don't want to give away the outcome uh, I really want to keep that all under wraps I want people to figure that out for themselves when they watch the film uh, what really ends up happening with this great escape if it ends up being a success or failure I want to have that be open but it is questioned um, if it was worth it and uh, you'll you'll kind of see how, how that all plays in and uh, for the most part, the acting is decent, and um, it can move a little bit slow, I think, at times. I think that's, again, because this is like a 1963 film, so it's going to kind of move at that 1963 pace. And it, and the second half just kind of kicks off, and I, I feel like I'm more invested in sort of towards the second half of the film than I am the first because the first, it, it just kind of moves at that, yeah, that just that slow pace of people acting and, and you know, I mean, I mean, to be honest, I didn't really find all of the characters to be that interesting or engaging. Uh, I just thought that they all kind of just did their part and were just sort of playing like um, ordinary people who all just wanted sort of this same goal to escape. So... Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't really see a lot of, um, of variety when it really came to characters so much. Um, but as an escape movie and something that's trying to present itself as an escape movie, I think it really works. Um, especially with the, the plans that they come up with and the ways that they try to hide things. 
uh, you can really tell that these people were really smart and really wanted to find a way to escape and and it was nice that they tried to think of a way to get so many people out even though that's that is a very difficult task and is is and people I think even today still kind of um, hold some praise for for this particular event um, that did happen because uh, because they were willing to risk so much uh, just to just to have this this kind of freedom so I, I think that it's going to appeal to um, to a lot of people I think uh, if you like these kinds of prison type esh escape movies um, this was definitely up your alley if you like um, these this sort of old style of of uh, filmmaking, another reason as to how this would appeal to you. Uh, I just think for me it kind of just, it's just a little bit slow in the first half and then it just starts to kick up until that, okay finally you've made the everything, now it's, now it's time to initiate the escape. Uh, that's when it starts to really pick up really for me uh, personally, but um, yeah, I think that's really all I can say about this film. It 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 keeps you it can keep you engaged. However, I would encourage people since it is almost three hours um, that if you're in a patient mood, this will this movie will probably work for you. But if you're not really in a patient mood, it's going to be hard for you to to get involved and get interested until the escape finally comes in. Um, that's that's probably the the biggest gamble maybe for you but for others who really like these kinds of old style movies definitely worth checking out definitely worth taking into consideration uh, I think that it, it in my eyes this would be a classic because even though there are some things that you know didn't really engage me as much I think that the ideas that they had and the fact that this was trying to base itself upon something that actually happened I think is really interesting and it's nice to see that it exploited and shown in a film um, and I think it was just really well done and really well executed but I think that's really all I can say any questions comments concerns more than happy to answer them and uh, until next time bye bye everybody